Hi everyone, there's people here already. Wow, I'm just gonna get ready to do the live stream on Facebook just to back us up tonight to make sure that we've got the Q&A. But come on in, as you're coming on in, why not let me know in the chat what it is you're teaching, where your school is, and eventually what I aim to do is hopefully bring us all on screen so that we can see each other tonight as we go through Q&A. So if you don't wanna be on screen, by all means, just feel free to not turn the video on. But as we go through this Q&A process, it helps me be able to get to know who you are. If you've got any questions in particular about the technology of your course, then please, um, I can share screen throughout the process, but um, in my test school, and I'm happy to do that. But if you want to show me something on your school, then please make sure that you're on a computer and we are ready to go. So I'm just gonna give it a few minutes because we are a little early here uh, popping in, but it's nice to see everyone popping in already. Hello, Gail, hello, Jackie, how are you? Please let me know what you teach. Please let me know um, what you're teaching in the chat box tonight and, and maybe pop your school links in and we will do a little bit of house cleaning. I'm keeping, I'm just gonna give it a few minutes to allow people to come on in here. Um, I'm gonna share the Zoom link so that we make sure that if anyone wants to come and ask questions, they are coming in via Zoom tonight to, to answer in that area. So hopefully we will be able to get ready and get started soon. So I'm so excited to see people here early. It's great. It means that we know that everyone's getting ready to come across. So I am very excited to see everyone here tonight. So just give it a few more minutes. Um, as I said, it's only three minutes to seven. And so we'll just give it a few minutes for everyone to find us and get started. So fingers crossed we'll be in for a good session. So looking forward to it so just give me a few minutes to do the little admin side of things um and i'm just going to put a note on the live stream to come and join us come join zoom to ask questions okie dokie and let's get started for tonight if I can with all of this and we'll we'll get ready and just going to quickly see if I can edit this live stream why it's up and we'll be ready to go um okay a beautiful more people popping in it's great to see everyone hello how is everyone just giving everyone a few minutes to be able to find us I'm just popping into the chat here uh Jackie you teach financial co um, coaching for financial grown-ups um <laughs> I love it helping people get their shoes Sorted. That is awesome. Uh, looking, seeing some familiar faces come in as well. As you come in tonight, guys, please feel free to introduce yourself, pop your details into the chat, pop in what you're looking at teaching. Um, and I'm just going to make sure that this live stream is going out the way that we would like it to. Um, and in the comments inside the live stream is the link. Uh, everyone, if you need to get here, um, I can't seem to edit this live stream as we go. Um, jump in and come into the Zoom live stream area. I'm just popping the link into the comments on the video on the live stream. So if you do want to come and join me, come in there because I, there's, there is just me here the, at the moment. And the last thing I want to do is um, confuse the hell out of myself and not be able to answer the questions everywhere that I am tonight. So I'm just going to quickly see if I can do one edit. If I can't, we're not even going to worry about it. We are not going to worry about it. We'll just do the light. We'll do the, the uh, talk chat over here as well. Um, okie dokie. Do, 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 do. Nope, it's not going to let me do that. So we will just, oh, here we go. There's the Zoom link. So for those of you watching that one, the Zoom link is definitely in there. I'm just going to cross post to a few pages because I can here at the moment. Um, and we might as well get, have a bit of fun tonight and get started with everyone and we will get started okay let's come back to zoom and let's see what everyone's doing so if anyone's watching our facebook live stream tonight please by all means make sure that you come in and get um uh get started from there uh okay beautiful uh we've got people from all over the country we've got pennsylvania looking to cassandra's looking to teach um 
needlework and you're in the uk good morning to you uh, cassandra's in queensland lottie's a digital literacy student and i've seen lottie in a number of my workshops nice to see you here um, and you're doing employability courses online in the next three weeks so this is fantastic i am glad to see everyone here tonight as it's only 701 i'm going to give everyone a few more minutes to find us but what i am going to do is i'm going to start promoting hopefully everyone to panelists so that we can be on screen tonight and we can get to chat. I'm gonna start making my way through the system. If you don't wanna be on video, you don't have to be. I do ask that everyone mutes themselves as we go through this process. Uh, so you mute yourself and that, may, that way it means that when you need to talk, you can, you can put the video on, but we don't have any background noise or stuff coming through into tonight's Q&A session. So just going through very shortly and hopefully I should be able to see you all on screen, although we've got many non-video participants at the moment. Um, please come on screen if you can, so that I get to, to see you and, and get to talk to you about your questions tonight. Uh, that would be lovely. And I'm just running through promoting everyone else to panelists tonight. That means we can have a bit of a chat and we can get through the process. Look, people are coming on board. Good morning, hello, how are we all? Fantastic. We've got some panelists here. Hey, Lottie, how are you? Nice to see you. <laughs> hey, Cassandra, how are you? Hey, Jenny, I'm seeing all these faces and I'm seeing everyone come through tonight. Uh, and it's great to have everyone here. Okay, so anyone who knows me, I don't tend to fluff around and we don't tend to go on too long with these sessions. We tend to answer questions and we tend to jump in to stuff as we go along. This session is, um, uh, Shana's from the Caribbean and she's building courses around violence pre prevention and technical assistance. That's awesome too. Okay, so tonight is a session where we answer your questions about course creation. Now, I am not a coder, I am not a developer and I am not thinkific. Um, I'm gonna state that from the very, very start. I am here as a thinkific expert and an ambassador I use the program, I teach my students how to use the program, and sometimes I get stuck just as much as you guys will along the way in your course creation journey. But the biggest thing that COVID-19 has brought us is this move to online teaching, the move to online education. And I know that it was hard for me to do it and I didn't know all the answers and questions along the way. So that's what tonight's session is all about. You ask me, you ask questions and I'll answer them. So you can either choose to raise your hand and talk, or you can choose to just unmute yourself and have a conversation. If we end up talking over each other, we'll work something out. Um, and this is all designed for you guys to ask me your questions about where you are within your course creation journey. But what I think we might do first is get, let's get to know each other. Let's get to know the currently 11 people that we have in the room getting to talk to each other. And because I've got my marketing circle members on screen and they should be used to me by now, I'm going to make them introduce themselves first. And Jenny, yep, I'm gonna start with you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jenny. I'm actually in New Zealand. Um, I'm a business consultant to creatives and I help take um, hobbies to a sustainable business. Fantastic. Cassandra, what about yourself? Yeah, I'm in Queensland. I normally travel doing craft shows, but uh, COVID sort of put a deader on that. So yeah, I'm needlework, textile and crafts, Fantastic. retail and training. Nice to see you. And there's Cassandra too, which I believe is Andrew, is that correct? Uh, well, that's Sophie. There's Andrew ducking his head in. Andrew's hiding. I heard you were coming in, Andrew. Please say hi to everyone and tell us what you're looking to teach. Uh, craft. craft? I, work, I work with uh, Cassandra. Oh, fantastic. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Lottie, you know me well enough by now. <laughs> Hi, yeah, I'm Lottie. Um, I'm a digital literacy and employability skills tutor. Um, I've been asked to take some of my employability skills stuff online, especially how to do resumes and things like that. So that's what I'm launching first. So that's me. And I'm so, so excited to see you teaching online. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Finally. Yeah, we'll get there eventually. <laughs> Anne, would you like to introduce yourself to everyone because you're on screen with us here? Yeah. Yeah, hi, I'm, I'm Anna. I'm, uh, I live in the UK, but I'm Danish and I'm looking to create a Danish online course with Thinkific. Fantastic. I think I've seen you around a Thinkific group. 
Beautiful. Uh, Gail, would you like, Gail Canning, would you like to introduce yourself to the group? Take anyone who would like to introduce themselves to the group right now. If you want to unmute your microphone and introduce yourself to the community, then you are more than welcome to. Because the biggest thing you get out of this type of environment is the opportunity to be able to share, educate and network between each other and share different courses around. So if you've got a microphone, please feel free to put your hand up and say that you'd like to say something. What about Peter? Peter, would you like to introduce yourself to the group? Ooh, we've all gone quiet. Okay. Then if there's no more introductions left, let's throw it over to Q&A. What would you like to know? Has anyone got a question for me tonight? There is no silly questions. And if I can't answer it, I'll go and see if I can find you an answer. Oh my gosh. So if you just unmute yourself and then we can, I can hear you. Well, I'm here. I'll talk to you. It's Jackie, if you can hear me. Hey, Jackie. How are you? I'm good. I've got a, I'm in Perth at the moment, so it's five o'clock and it's right on zoo time feeding the animals. So yep. forgive me if you hear noises in the background. That's why I'm... Pretty sure we muted. all understand. <laughs> yes. How can I help? Um, I guess I'm, look, I'm just here to learn to learn all about um, Thinkific because everybody goes on about it and I've, I've heard so many good things. I just need to learn how to do it. I'm the expert from the finance side of things. I'm the expert in what I want to teach. It's just putting it together um, okay. in an easy program. Yeah. And that's most probably definitely what I find Thinkific is. Uh, we went through finding course platforms and all of those sorts of things. And I re have a really handy, and I'm just going to jump onto YouTube and grab the link for you, a really handy how-to video where we've actually walked through the process of setting up my, my test school, which we actually did with lots of people last week. Uh, not a couple of weeks ago. I, I keep thinking it's last week. It definitely wasn't last week. Um, but of course, you know, as, as we things go inside the, the world of COVID-19 at the moment, um, everything's moving forward through that journey. I've got a really handy walkthrough. That's about an hour and a half session. What I like about Thinkific is you can build your landing pages. You can move your course content up. Most of the, most of the setup for Thinkific is pretty much a, a uh, walkthrough, a straight walkthrough system that you're able to get in there and you're able to walk through it and drag and drop everything through. You don't need to know how to code, which I think is most probably one of the best things when it comes to moving you through into your course creation journey. Um, I'm happy to take people through a walkthrough of the back end of it in a little bit if we need to as well. But that walkthrough literally steps you up from where do you put your logo? Where do you put your branding? Where do you put the information? There's some other videos on the channel around areas where, we, where people get tripped up constantly. And as you start to build your landing pages, sometimes you forget to check your buttons. And it doesn't matter what platform you're on, you forget to check your buttons. Uh, and it's quite often a trick that get, gets along the way. Is there something in particular that you're looking to, rec are you looking at doing two camera videos? Are you looking at screencasting, Jackie? What's your plan? Good question. Um, I don't know yet. I don't know yet. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> you don't have to know yet. I've, I've pretty much pretty much what I want to do is just digitize what I do in the workshops that I've been presenting um, yep. you know, trying to get to the to the one to much more many the one to many the much more many um, good language <laughs> I speak in the good English um, <laughs> that's okay it's been my yeah. day to day here I can't get words out of my mouth at all <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah look basically just just wanting to put something online that people can self pace themselves with um, yeah do some screen maybe not screen, yeah, screen sharing, do some yeah. diagrams, do some actually write and draw pictures as I'm talking as well. Yeah. Is, is something else that I want to do because I find Fantastic. pictures tend to resonate. A couple of things that I tend to suggest to our workshop presenters who have been presenting in workshops, we have one of these devices in our hands quite often mm -hmm. when we're presenting in workshops. When you go to screencast your presentation, plug it in. 
and continue to use it because then you're not looking down at your mouse and going, oh, did I click that bit right? Because that face is really annoying. Uh, you'll try and edit it yourself, edit out yourself out of the process over that area. Um, so use your clicker. You, I'm not, I don't like my face when I screencast and have myself in the corner. That doesn't work for me. So I tend to mix it up between a little bit of a pre, an introduction. So an introductory video, you know, this is what we're going to cover in this lesson. And then we go into the PowerPoint presentation or we go into the, the how to video and the screencasting video. One of the tools that I love for screencasting is called Screencastify. It is a Google Chrome extension. It um, costs about $24 a month. Um, and I shall get grab before everyone starts to freak out. I'll grab you my toolkit list that's on my website. Otherwise, you'll try and keep up with me as I, I mentioned tools tonight. Um, it's a really handy tool. It's got, you can screencast, it goes to Google Drive. Um, and what it does for you is it just helps you be able to, you've got highlighters, you've got the little bit ability to draw. So if it's something you want to draw, there's a little drawing tool in it as well. And it's a great place to start. Um, it's not fantastic for your two camera video, but it's an amazing place to start when it comes to uh, moving your information through. So I'm just move, promoting a couple extra people to panelists as well. And inside the chat box, you should see the course creation tools now as well. And Kimberly's in here is great. Um, and you can't see the hand, raise hand function. That's most probably because I've made you all panelists. That's most probably my fault that you can't see the raise hand function. But your question is, how important is it to have an external website linked to your Thinkific, connected to your Thinkific site? Okay, do you have a website existing at the moment? Okay, one or two things. The reality of it is you've got to get something up. So getting your own web, getting a Thinkific site up and then starting to build a blog and, and things in down the track is fine. Uh, what I'd be looking at doing at the moment is starting to build yourself an email list and starting to build a list either by MailChimp or something like that, that you can market your course through or whether your social media and your Facebook page is, is there and growing, then be able to do that. And I normally say to most of the students I work with in course creation world, if that's something you're looking at doing, by all means, look at doing a free checklist or a free how to, or, you know, maybe some introductory words to learning Danish, you know, do you need to speak Danish to people? And, and just put together a small short teaser. Canva's a great tool for putting eBooks together. Um, and that is great. Um, Kimberly's got a, so, so does, does that answer your question? Yeah, you can ask more. You can more, more than happy to ask me more. It's what it's here for. Kimberly has a sleeping baby. Um, she'd like to put, put a question here. How do you create two separate web pages in Thinkific? A sales page for your course with a buy button and a course login page that only has a login box for existing students. Okay. Um, I'll happily screen share and I'll go into my area, but Thinkific doesn't have only a login box. It, it becomes sort of a site and a library of courses. But what I can do is I can show you our test site or actually, no, I think I'll show you my site because it's most probably more active at the moment. So I'm just going to move into screen share mode for a second, guys, and share my screen so you'll all pop up in front of me and we'll go through to our particular site. We'll just land on a course landing page for a moment and I'll try and explain what the course landing page looks like. So your course landing page is just like this. And I'm just going to sign out for a second. So you can see everything. Oh, of course it took me to the homepage. Okay, so a course landing page looks just like this. It's got your description in it and depending on your theme, you, you can or you, you, you can have videos here depending on the theme and how it goes. Now I use the vision theme because I like the video up in the header. So as you go through the site builder, you'll get to choose which theme that you would like to use if you're only starting that journey and you'll be able to look at it from there. Uh, so your, the options now have got our buy buttons. We, I love these little icons and text because it connects with the audience. We then have got a couple of little bits of descriptions and pictures of the cards in action because people like that sort of stuff. Uh, a little bit more. So we've got a call to action button here just for the course by itself. Then we've got one with, for the course and deck, deck popping up underneath it. Then our smart curriculum section. So the, what we will cover and the stuff you see here is called the smart curriculum section. It auto fills itself as you start to publish lessons. And we've got our week one and our week two for this course. Our week three is about to launch for next week. So our week three's content will start to publish over the next little while to help people through this course. The bit that you see here is called an instructor's bio and that's the instructor bio in the building site builder template when you build it. 
uh, and that runs through through that particular component here when in the site builder. So you're able to build, put your instructor in, put a nice little photo of yourself in and do put a photo of yourself in because it's about building your street credibility. It's about creating that know, like and trust factor and a little short blurb about you. It doesn't need to be long and it doesn't have to be, you know, take over the world. It just needs to say that you know your stuff. We then got a pricing table because this particular course has two prices here. So price one and price two. And then one more call to action, which says that you can do it, take this as a marketing circle member, which is my membership area. And that would take people off to the marketing circle to look at that whole landing page. That's your course landing page. As a student, if you were coming to my site, you would go to the sign in button up here and you would sign into the, sign into the area. Now I'm gonna sign in as a test user, not as an admin user. Uh, strongly recommend the test users. Oh, and the test, of course, the test student only has an affiliate prog program assigned to it. Of course it does on this one. Uh, let me just sign out for a second and we'll sign into another one. Um, so if I sign in as myself and go to the student dashboard instead, bear with me. The tool I'm using is LastPass. If anyone wants to know how come I'm remembering passwords, I'm not. I love LastPass. Um, it's my big thing. So this is your back end of your thinking big site. We'll, we'll come back there if we need to later. Um, inside the site here, when I'm there, there's a My Account tab. And the My Account tab is actually, or the My Dashboard is the, the student dashboard. So the My Student Dashboard over here. So they log in and as a student logs in, they get taken to this dashboard. And this dashboard has all of the courses available in it. So unless you really want to make just a simple, simple login page and you could possibly do it, you could build a custom page to do it, but it's, it's about bringing people through to your site. So they would get taken to the dashboard and the dashboard has whatever courses they're enrolled in, has a little percentage mark of how much they've completed. Gee, I'm lazy on my own courses, aren't I? Um, and it runs through that process and it gives you the opportunity to be able to know where those things are. So the home page is the other bit that you've, we've seen, and this becomes the home page of the site. And hopefully I'm taking a long way of answering the question, but the home page comes through uh, on a, the description about the whole school, the whole academy. Now you might only have one course to begin with, but I say to people, build this home page because as you start to release course two and three, that will work through. So what you see here is we've got our lovely course banner up the top with our menu that says for the My Dashboard for people to be able to get to their dashboard. Little introduction to what the school is about. Now meet your course leaders comes in and that's my, meet your, my husband and myself who run the courses. Then we have a smart section here, which is called the, the course smart section. And it brings in up to nine, 12 courses. So 12 different courses, including our bundles, which is our membership areas as well. Um, and I'll show you a bundle page in a minute, just so that you can ex you get the idea of how they all work together. And then discover more courses. If I open that in a new link, that button will then take everyone off to the whole collection. So all the courses, and we've got them broken down into categories from there, which you can by all means do. Our testimonials from previous courses are on the landing page here. And when I get round to it and do what I say, I do what I say instead of what I what I'm doing at the moment, I would actually put a call to action down for both of our membership areas down the bottom here as well for both Clive and mine, which just unfortunately isn't there because I've been spending so much time teaching others how to get their courses online. I'm not doing my own stuff at the moment. Uh, to have a look at a bundle, and a bundle is what you might hear people refer to in the world of Think as membership programs. So a bundle happens to work very similar to this. And this is our bundle. This is my bundle for my marketing circle page. And it gives them access. We cover with the icons what it gets access to. Inside a bundle, as you add courses, they appear here on a smart section of the page. And it's just like building a normal site builder option. And the, the, the pricing details and that are there. But it just shows you what a bundle page looks like as well. I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a minute. Um, Bear with me, let me just stop sharing my screen and then we can stop share, come on, play nicely. Okay, can, uh, do you customise what the student sees after they sign in? I don't. The reason I don't customise landing pages and that is if the Thinkific theme updates, then things break. 
as the more you customize things, things break. So I've worked within the world of Thinkific and quite happy for them to be on a student dashboard. There are teachers out there will teach you how to do things. I just like a smooth operation. I would much rather send an email through to my students as they register and we do that via Zapier, um, which says, you know, congratulations on signing up for this course. This is how you navigate your way through it. This is where you find your landing page. And in every email we send out for our course participants as they go through content, we send them through to, to, to different links. So we send them through to the course. So if there's a Facebook group we're running, so for my, my Marketing Circle members, they've got a link down the bottom that says, you know, head to the Facebook group and ask a question or head to your members area down the bottom, which takes them through to the Marketing Circle dashboard throughout that process. Um, but you can customise it if you wish to. It's just not something that we tend to do because as things upgrade and tech changes, the least amount of things you have to break, the better. Okay, has anyone else got any questions for me? Well, that was a bit of a mouthful. Uh, okay, still new to the platform, haven't published my course yet. How do we create a course landing page? Beautiful, I can do that one for you. Okay, let's go into my test school. Um, does Thinkific have gamification? I can answer that one quickly before I go into the building landing pages. Gamification isn't part of Thinkific. There are platforms that you can use to bring gamif gamification into your courses like Kahoot, like all of those ones. And for those who are looking at me going, what's gamification? It's about how you reward people and you know have little ch uh, quizzes and surveys and those sorts of things. So Thinkific's got its basic quiz, quiz components in it and its basic survey components but it's not a gamification as a whole. It's like everything. It's a specialization in itself and you work with the, with the platforms and you can definitely embed multimedia lessons and all sorts of things within Thinkific to do that. Let's show you a landing page. Shall we go and do that? Has anyone else got any other questions before I jump into the back end? Beautiful. Let's show you a landing page. Okay, share your screen. I'll go into my test school because that's easier and what I do on there won't confuse people, hopefully. Okie dokie. So this is my test school. As you can see, it's the one I did the walk through, walk through the other day and we've got 193 days on our countdown timer. Hopefully no one visits this anytime soon, but it's a basic framework of what we set up. So that walkthrough video, that I share with you all, this is this is where we did it. This is where we did those things. So our, our dashboard and that for students is in here. There is definitely some things I need to fix up in relation to text. But if we go to the back, back end of the site, we'll actually go through how you would set up a course to how you would build a landing page from that area here. Now you've got some beautiful things from Thinkific that will teach you how to customize your site. I don't follow that system. I'll let you in on that one right now tend to go through things. I like to see that I've got my win and I've got my logo up. So if you watch my walkthrough and say that it doesn't follow the Thinkific one, I'll give you a tip. It's just because this is the way we find it easier to do things. Okay, so to preview and build a landing page, there's two spots you can do it from. You can go from design your site and into the site builder. And in the site builder, you've got your home page, you've got your courses, You've got um, bundles, if you're building a bundle together or a membership area, you've got default pages in your landing page. Your home page, and I'm only gonna to touch on this quickly because the walkthrough goes through this in more, in more area. This header default is the thing that controls the branding for your whole site. So this is where your logo is set, this, the style of the, how you want the area to be, whether you want your the My Dashboard link, which is we had in there, and whether you wanna show menu label as well and any other custom links that you might want to add throughout that process. So you might want to go um, check out, for example, and to find things within Thinkific that you've got pages from, you would just go through this, through this area here and check out page bundles, pages coming soon, or a custom URL. So you might want to, for example, I might want to direct it off to my course creation tools one, for example, and I can go custom URL, pop the URL in the menu here and call it 
and then that will link through to something in my website as well. So if you, it could be your Facebook groups, if you're running a Facebook group for the school as a whole, you might want to pop that into the custom menu up the top. Um, okay, I'm going to come back to the chat questions at the moment. Um, no, you should have Site Builder in the menu option, Kimberly. Definitely, Site Builder is part of everything in Thinkific, unless you've come across from old themes. Um, unless you've come across from an old theme like the V1 themes, the Site Builder should be in that menu down the down the end there. So I'll just go back and show you where it is, um, and hopefully I can find it for you because it should be. So in this menu under here, because I'm a Pro Plan user, and this is exactly how it should be set up for you. So under design your site and then site builder should be there. So hopefully you can find that. Now you can build your course landing pages from these this spot, but I tend not to, but it is there to be able to build. So if you've got a course underway, you can start to build your landing page from there. Only because I'm old school and I've been working with Thinkific for a while, I tend to do everything from the courses section. Um, and I can talk colour palettes. Actually, uh, Jackie just, uh, Anne just asked about colour palettes. Let me go back one more time to this area over here. A couple of things about colour palettes and how to set your colours. This particular area over here is the theme, theme builder, is so the theme library, and you've got the option to be able to look at the themes that you've got here. So if you just click the information button, it should bring you up a little preview. It's not changing not to today. Um, I don't want to publish it. Exploring themes. Sorry, guys, it's over here. Uh, just you, you can explore the themes and the colour palettes are here. You are not stuck to a colour palette that you choose on the theme. And I'll show you how you can go and set the fonts and the colours to match your brand because you definitely want to do that going through. Um, but the vision one's the one that I use and it's because you get that video up the top, but you can choose whatever theme you like. Um, but go and have a play and make sure that they suit from the area from there. The okay. colour palette stuff comes into the site builder once again, and it comes in under this theme settings tab. I'm just going to grab a sip, sip of water. Linda, we can't see your screen. Oh, that's great. That's fantastic. It hasn't been sharing. Should be sharing. Here we go. Share screen. Let's try it again. Here we go. Thank you for letting me know. Okay. So let's go back a second. <laughs> God, that's great. Could you see my screen before? Oh, can anyone tell I don't work nights? Um, okay, so Site Builder, let's go back and I'll, I'll run with through where we are. Sorry, guys, I apologise. Nights are not my time. Um, so design your site and Site Builder should appear in the site main menu here. Okay, the theme settings that you have come in from this from the styles like theme settings come in from here but to go and look at your theme builder from that area um awesome um okay second way to do a course landing page okay beautiful we'll be able to get that through sorry guys i can't see chat when i'm in screen when i'm technically in screen share so if you guys can share that with me let me know just talk to me that'll be fine um but get, let's jump out of here for a second i don't know what happened throughout the process but let me just jump out back a step and make sure that I cover everything I said I was going to. So inside the site builder, you've got your page settings. Come on, internet, work with me. Okay, so inside site builder, you've got the option for theme library over here. And the theme library pops in here. You can see that my, my test site needs an update. And it normally is just a security patch, but you need to update from time to time. Um, is a vision of that? Yeah, any of the themes are available with the free version. So you can choose whatever theme that you would like, unless something has changed in the world of Thinkific, any theme that you like is available throughout that period of time. So you can choose vision, you can choose Vogue, you can choose Empire, you can choose publish. If you go to the explore themes tab over here, it'll bring you up a preview. So you can hit view details, you can see what it looks like, you can look at the button styles, you can look at the page layout, um, and then you can choose, look at colours. But once again, you're not restricted to colours and you can change the text around based on, based on the site. But I normally say, find the one that works closest for you. But if you're like me and you want the video up in the top landing page, then Vision is your only option. But Empire and Vogue both have their abilities and I have students using them because they like those themes just as well. So it comes down to personal choice 
when you choose your theme from there. So go through that process. When we go through the theme library though, you'll, you'll set up your theme. There are people out there that will customize the theme. So they'll make a duplicate. So you can see you can do a duplicate here or you can edit code. That is not my area of specialty. That is something that I get other people to do for me. Um, and because I want my Thinkific school to be as raw as it possibly can to show you guys, this is how you can do it using the system. I don't edit any code. We've kept everything straight, clean, Thinkific uh, as, as you can go. Inside the site builder, once you get over here, there's a couple of spots that you can set things from. And one of the, one of the key spots is obviously the home page and making sure that we set our logos and we set our instructor, we, we set our, our banner detail. So inside the header, you'll be able to set your logo and you'll be able to set your style. Now I've got a transparent header over here, but right now I could choose a solid one. And that's gonna bring a, a block of color. So see, I just brought the block of color up over the menu. Uh, which makes things a little bit easier to read. So we might even save that for the moment on this school and just leave it there. Um, your logo size from here, I can resize the image. Maybe not that small, but you can resize it just dragging and dropping. And that's most of what you see and think if it, you can pretty much do that. You can drag and drop and move everything through under that system. So that's where you set your logo. That's where you set your, your style and where you want to put anything into a menu, that's where you set your menu links. The theme settings tab over here comes into the different styles that the theme has itself. And then this is where your colors get set. So I normally say to people, if you've got a brand, col brand colors, go, I, I talk about it with the Empire theme, it's most probably only because I just don't like the ugly green in the Empire theme. I go, go and remove all the ugly green with your colors. So go and find everyone that's there that with, your, with your brand colors. Um, it's just a matter of setting up the code and popping the colors in that work for you. The accent color is that particularly that gold one that gets used to highlight different your icons and your text. So your accent color is one that you do need to really like because if you use it for icons, it's gonna show up everywhere on the site. Um, what else was I gonna show you on that one? If you need to use your color, find your colors and you don't have it in your logo style guide, there is a Google plugin called Colorzilla, which you can see me highlighting over at the moment now. It's a color picker and it's not gonna pick them for print, but it'll help you pick for, for web-based colors. So you can see it's picking the gold up there. It's picking up the black if I move it slightly and that gives you the code so the yellow, for example, it's just copied the code so that if I needed to put the code in to the, one of these boxes over here, and I'm going to do it to this one. Okay, we can, let's change this to purple for a second. And then if I want to put the code in, come on, catch up with me. My internet's slow, guys, I'm sorry. Uh, I just put the code in there and the, and the code for the yellow changes through and you can put those details in. So that's how you customise your theme settings. Inside there, you've also got the opportunity to customize your fonts. And think if it uses a whole heap of Google fonts that you can customize and change your font styles to. So your banner fonts, all of that sort of stuff, you can customize as long as it's a Google font, uh, pretty much as, as far as you wanna go. And then the Favicon is one that people often forget. And this is the little bit that sits up on, and because we're on the back end of the site, you can't see it. Let's see if we can get this doing here. If I'm logged in, is it going to do it? It's a little icon that normally sits up here. Like you can see the BB, but yeah, you can see it. Sorry, bear with me. Test learning. So if you see up the top here, there's just that little man and that's the favicon that I have set here. And it's just a browsing branding thing that hops in your website browser. And it just means that it matches your website or matches your brand. Um, so that's the theme settings. To build your landing pages, you can go from there. We'll leave, we'll leave that just in case I did something that I didn't want to do. To create a course, for, for example, and to do everything, then that I do most of this under manage learning content and courses. Now to set your instructor bios, they're here. Um, they're covered more in the walkthrough. But course-wise, you can set up a course. Now, Thinkific, and when we go, and I'm just gonna move us for a second, we add new course. They have amazing templates here that you can use, but I'm a little bit picky and prefer the blank one. 
because I can make it my way. But there's mini course templates and there's all sorts of things. The one thing I would say to you is if you get stuck in any of the mini course templates, any of these templates, and you're doing a quiz because the quiz was in there, um, I'll cover that one in a second. Um, is there, um, if you get stuck because they've got quiz modules or they've got something in it, and you don't think it's going to suit your style of teaching, just delete it. You don't have to have a quiz. You don't have to have a survey. Um, you can. You don't have to run discussions if you don't want to throughout that process. So it's up to you what you want to do. But you can use things. And for the process here, we will just go with a flagship course, which is the big one. And we'll go to test course two because we're really naming these well. It's a test school. And if I could type, that would be easier. And we create the course. And by creating the course, Thinkific are now going to populate that with their information and they're going to take me through the course landing page. And inside here are some handy tips, how to use the template. And you can see that the lessons are all set to draft at the moment currently uh, throughout that process. So they're all set to draft. And if, as you start to publish them, and we'll publish one or two of these because we need to, um, it, you'll see how your course content starts to come together. So I'm just going to hit save and publish a couple of them. I'm going to come back to chat after I finish this bit just so that I make sure that I move everyone through the right areas and hopefully we get there from there. Um, okay, bear with me. My share screen just stopped as soon as I came back to that. There we go. New features in. Thank you very much. Can everyone still see the screen now? Yep, beautiful. We're good. Okay, so... From here, we've got our course landing, we've got all our course curriculum, we've got our settings. This tab is really, really important. This tab helps you set out whether your course is private or public. But when you start to publish your course and go, there's still a grey box on the front screen of my school, I don't understand where the grey box comes from. It's set here. It's got nothing to do with the site builder. It is set in the course images and descriptions and you just upload your image. The handy thing about Thinkific is pretty much for every image you upload, wherever you've got to put anything, they have got the pixel sizes so that you can head to Canva or whatever design tool that you're using and be able to load it. This course description will be what goes out on Google from an SEO point of view. So when you're link preview and you share your course, that's the text that you need to pop in there. Um, okay, so that's a really important one. The other important one is obviously our pricing tab. I didn't make any changes, it's all good. Um, and you can set in, up your pricing, whether it's a one-time payment fee um, and you can connect to Stripe and PayPal. They are the only two payment platforms that Thinkific work with. Uh, if you're in an area where neither of those are accepted, then the only option, and it's unfortunate, is to look at third-party checkout programs and whether it's a checkout, if you've got an existing website, then maybe looking at selling via WooCommerce and zapping some stuff through or looking at a, a payment plan. And think if you can Zapier connect really well with most third, part, third party payment platforms, but it is a big thing. The key thing to know for, especially for us Australian people and those people who aren't in the US and won't be charging in US dollars, Stripe is what sets the currency. So if you're going, how do I set that in Australian dollars? Stripe is what sets the, the currency to Australian dollars or New Zealand dollars or, or whatever it is. So the Stripe account is how you set your currency. PayPal, if you're just selling via PayPal, will only connect via US dollars. So you can connect via Stripe and connect PayPal and the setup will happen from there. Your subscription and your membership options are, are there as well. Um, and depending on your plan, you can have one or multiple prices going through your course. After purchase, you could, um, and Kimberly, this might help you, you could possibly add a flow where they go to a custom page after a purchase, which talks about who, where, where, what's happening next for them without the journey. That's not going to allow them to be able to do that, but you can add a flow through here. It's a paid plan one, so you could create a custom thank you page, direct people through, and possibly let them know about other products and services that they might be interested in. This is a relatively new feature to Thinkific. So anyone on my schools most probably doesn't see that as we go through, but you can look at upselling. You can do a whole heap of things on those pages from there. So you can build your own little thank you page and put the custom URL or have a custom URL. So they land on your own website or Facebook group um, in particular or, or whatever it is that you would like to put through throughout that process. The publish tab is the other one because we either want to publish our course or we want to pop it in pre-order. 
the course that you saw that I have before is up there on pre-order, which means students don't get to access it until the course is ready to take. So they don't get to see the information in it, they don't get to do anything with it until the course is ready to take. And that day that I take it off pre-order and I hit published is the day that the course will be able to go through from there. To build your landing page, this is where I do it from. So Lottie, up the top up here, there's a build your landing page button. It's the same, it takes you to the same area. It's just that I happen to be old school and I tend to like it this way. Um, when you get to your site builder, there is a couple of different ways that this is set up and it quite often isn't always set up that you've got the preview bar on the side. So just go through and have a, have a look. Um, I can't get it back now, but it, for a while there, it wasn't there on the side and there was just a little hamburger menu, but maybe they've taken it away. That would be lovely. Um, a hamburger menu that meant you could see the preview bar. Now the preview bar over here on this side is gonna be squished up as you start to build your stuff. The header, if you make any changes to that, will make changes to the whole site. The banner for your course is here. I'm gonna leave the rest to the walkthrough, but your curriculum section is there and you can add sections. So you can add additional information, bonus material, calls to actions, checklists, countdown Ooh. timers and all sorts of stuff. But that walkthrough video covers that in detail. So I'm gonna let you watch that at another moment in time. Um, and let me just come into the chat for a second. I'm going to stop screen sharing, screen sharing so I know that I've done it this time around. Um, could, um, could the after purchase be used? Yeah, custom URL, Cassandra, you can definitely use it to redirect to purchase the, the kit, the stuff that they would need to purchase uh, to go along through that process. I've included a, a physical product with my last one. And all I've done in the checkout is I've added a custom field that just asks for postal addresses and just put price the course appropriately to cover worst case scenario pro um, approaching pricing. Uh, what else have we got in here? How do we set up pay? <sighs> okay, I the, the payment gateways, unless it's Stripe, unless it's PayPal is only a third party option. I'm really sorry. I cannot give you an answer on how else to do that one. I'm hoping with the amount of people that ask that question, thinking if we can maybe gonna come up with a solution to if you can't get a Stripe or a PayPal account to be able to do that. Is there a way for students to submit coursework to complete this course or worksheet? There's the discussion tab and you can have people do it that way. I tend to, if I've got my students submitting work, have a Google Drive folder and I link it as a multimedia lesson and I get them to do it that way. Or um, an embedded, and this is most probably comes through a, a type form or a gravity form, especially if you wanna get a notification that it's come through or Google form to get a submission detail. I don't find the Thinkific emails all that great um, in being able to tell us everything all the time. Uh, but yet yeah, you could use Dropbox to submit work. It's just a multimedia link that everyone can connect to. So you either create a lesson um, or if you're using a video lesson, you can put the text in underneath and say, you know, when you finish this, follow the link to the Dropbox folder, submit your, submit your work and let me know. Part of the reason I like using a type form or a Google form is you get an email. Um, is it possible to give someone a payment? Yes, if you're on a, a pro or a basic plan, you can do um, coupon codes. Under market and sell, there's a coupon option. You can make it 100% if you want to, or you could literally go on either of those plans, you can go and manually register them as well. So for us, our Media Connections members, they don't pay for the How to Write a Media Release course. They become a member. They get the, they get the course as part of their membership on that particular site. So we have Zapier go and take the information from that registration and, and whack them straight into the new area. Does that make sense? Beautiful. Anyone else got any questions for me tonight? Is there anything about making the course that you want to know how to do? Ah, how do I link uh, the Think of It courses? I got really lazy. I originally created so many landing pages for the website um, and Helen and a few members know me here. We run multiple websites. I have literally linked through uh, the course, uh, literally linked through just a menu through to the, the end of a group Thinkific website because 
we had so much content going live in courses and that sort of stuff for me to go back and check landing pages and make sure that we got them all right is great. But you can, and I'll show you how you can get that. And Lois just asked, can I go through the different lesson types briefly? I'll show you how you can grab it if you need to, so that you can jump in and just give me a second. I need to get to a different spot and I just don't want to share student details on the main site. So give me a second and I'll just jump into where I need to be without showing stuff that I shouldn't show. Admin. Okay, manage learning content courses. Here we go. Okay, so for example, if we go to register the domain reader and then it'll be working. Okay, let's go through. I'm just going to come in and screen share with you now, guys. I just didn't want to show stuff that I shouldn't show. Um, share screen. Here we go. Don't come back to chat and you'll be fine. You won't lose your screen reader. Um, okay, so over here, for example, we have my marketing circle course. My marketing circle is on my website because we obviously want to talk about it there. It runs through, we've got our little details and I've got pricing tables, which looks, explains the, mark, the membership. If someone clicked on the join the circle link, whatever one they click on, it's going to take them directly to the Thinkific checkout platform because we don't need them to go back to the course landing page, um, which, was over, which is over here, um, the marketing circle. And we don't need them to go to that one and work out which one it's going to be because the landing page on my website's worked. So to get the information for your course, to get the payment details. So let's say we would just be going through to our memberships and bundles over here or whatever course that we needed to, but just so you can see it on the marketing circle and I keep it all the same. Over here on your course settings, when you set your prices, there's an option to copy the pricing link. So over here, there's an option here just to copy the link and you can copy the link there. And that's what I've placed in to the buttons on my website, which I now have lost the tab of um, because it went to the, went to the checkout button. Um, bear with me, went to the checkout button over here. So on my website, they're the options that I've placed into these buttons here. So you can build your own landing page and then put the buttons across from there. You can also, inside Thinkific, if you wanted to talk to your lovely web people and get them to put in a courses dot whatever, website that you want to do. Um, we've looked at the possibility of doing that um, and it's it's something that we, we possibly will do over the time. Um, that's all good. Uh, Jenny's got to go. That's okay. It's very late. Let's go and have a look at those message types, what are the lesson types while we're here. Sharing screen again. Okay. Back into the test learning area. Okay. We'll go to my admin panel. I'm just going to close some, close some buttons off here, guys. So we get in here. So in the test learning area, when your course area, you can go manage learning content, you'll find your courses under here. There's different lesson types and we'll jump into this one because it's easier to jump into. My favorite lesson type is the video lesson. The video lesson allows you to do so much now. It never used to, it's so great. You can put your title in, you can upload a video file, from wherever you would like to put it in. I'm not going to load one tonight because the regional internet will kill you. You can pop in some text. So you can put in a, you know, just type in whatever you would like to here, for example. And you can also upload a, a downloadable file. So you can pop in um, a file that's really quick and easy and I don't have anything here. Um, there we go, just put a quick, quick file up uh, and you can load the file up. And then that lesson, when we preview it in a second, We'll have actually, Cassandra, do you mind if I borrow your logo animation and pop it in up here as a video lesson just so people can see it? Hoping she doesn't. Hoping she's okay. I'm just going to borrow it for two minutes and pop it in. So we're just popping up a video logo animation in here so that you can see this lesson and test. It'll always bring the video title up, you know, test lesson. Okay, and if I hit save, I'll show you the preview course so that you can see what that is actually going to look like. Now, for some reason, why things are processing, the video here will, will say uh, no content. So well, that one actually says no content because I didn't load a video to it, but that's another video lesson. But let's preview the course so that you can see what I'm talking about. 
So you can preview your course at any stage just by hitting the preview course button. And then if we go to that test lesson here, it's saying the video will be available when the upload's complete. It's still processing. It's still rendering on the back end. But this is the text little box that I popped in. And this is the download button from here. So if people want to download the document, they can nice and easily. So fingers crossed the video will process in a second. But the other lesson types we've got is we've got a, a quiz. And the quiz is literally just putting in an answer, whether you've got one correct, correct, correct answer or not. Gee, I can get words out of my mouth tonight. Uh, what the question is and then what the choices you would like to be. And then you just tick whichever one's the correct answer. Um, and then you can go through and add more quizzes in. There's other lesson types of surveys. Um, bear with me. Hopefully everyone can see this. Two seconds, I'll just quickly check in on chat. Um, Okay, bear with me just a second. Um, okay, the couple of people had to leave. Can you guys still see the screen if I'm sharing this with you now? Hopefully you can still see the screen. Um, the other options that we've got is our surveys. So you can create a survey lesson. Survey lesson will give you based on results. It comes in a big Excel spreadsheet. Once again, it's about free text or you can put one or more answers in or you can have a rating or a scale. Um, and then there's the PDF lessons, uh, which are really handy if you want things to be downloadable. You got your downloadable files over here and you have got the assignment option for people to be able to submit an assignment for you, um, whether it's a downloadable Ooh. template and those sorts of things. I tend to think that I much prefer the Dropbox options um, because you are limited to a, to a certain number of files um, uploads, but you do have the option to use it. We just tend to use the Dropbox, ver the Dropbox and the Google Drive version or we get people to do things within the course areas from there. Um, there is a text and multimedia lesson. The multimedia lesson was the one that like before that I mentioned to you. If I chuck this one in for a second, we'll just grab a link off here. I'll grab this one, it might as well work. I'm just gonna grab a link and a multimedia lesson is just a link to either a Google Drive folder, Dropbox folders, websites. Uh, you don't want it, the title in there, you can pop it in here. Um, and you can just go multi. So multimedia is just what I'll pop in there. And if I save that, when the student, when we go back to the previewing of this particular course, and I refresh this one over here, I haven't published all the lessons. So you can see the multimedia lesson. If I click on that, that just brings up the website as it, as it is, it brings up the website. So if you've got maybe a, a website video or a Google doc file or something like that, you might want to pop that in there. The test video is popping in now, test lesson is. Right now, and that's how your video appears. So video, text, and then downloads will pop in from there. One other handy one to know about if you really want to get in, you want to add multiple videos and those sorts of things is the text lesson. Um, and you can then insert videos from your video library. So you can insert it like that. And then you might want to have a second video. So you just hit a couple of enters down and you can insert a video from there. In this one too, you can add images. So you can add an image through. Now think if it doesn't keep an image library for you, that's going to be something that you need to bring in, but you can bring in images and that into a text lesson. So there's lots you can do within a text lesson, just like you would a WYSIWYG editor on a website or something like that. There is one lesson in here that I don't use and it's the presentation lesson. So it's when you record, a you put your presentation slides up and you record your audio afterwards. The reason I don't use that lesson is because, and I'm gonna let that stop doing its thing and go through. Um, the reason, I, the feature for voiceover, the reason I don't do that is if you have to take a slide out or you have to do something down the track, it's a little bit harder to get those voiceovers to match up. And it's a great lesson if you like it. Um, and um, it's, it's a handy little one if you need it, but I tend to prefer to screen record my presentations. And then if I need to chop a slide out, I can go to the video editor and just chop that whole slide and the audio out at the one time. Um, but it's a, it's a handy little one if you wanna do it because you can voice over and go through it, but it's just me being most probably a little bit picky and wanting to make sure that I cut those things out. Okay, it's been a long night. Has anyone else got any other questions that they would like to ask? Because I know we've covered a lot.
Okay, you've been beautiful. You've checked your menu. Great, Kimberly. I'm glad you've been able to do that. I hope Bob's is sleeping well for you. Uh, for those of us who've been there, we understand that. Um, beautiful. I'm glad that everyone has had a good introduction. Um, if you've got any other questions, feel free to ask it. We've got a little bit more time, um, but happy to ask as much as I possibly can. Um, beautiful. You're more than welcome to unmute yourselves, guys, too, and just talk to me. Be so helpful. Um, who do you contact to get help? Uh, is it if it's to do with the fact that maybe something's not showing on your site, then support at Thinkific. Uh, for those, I wasn't going to sell tonight, but I do offer teaching and helping and support with course creation, so I can pop a link through and, and let you know. But if it's to something not appearing on your site, if it's something technical, support at thinkific.com should be able to get you the answer pretty quickly. They are absolutely bombarded at the moment with everyone teaching online. So normally I would say you get a response in 48 hours, but now you're most probably looking at a couple of days before you get an answer. But um, hopefully they will. And I'll just pop the email in here for you. So support at thinkific.com. There we go. For those who've been watching the live stream tonight, I will hopefully get in there. If there's been any questions, pop in. I will answer, try and answer them as much as I possibly can. Apart from that, if no one else has got any other questions, I'm going to wrap it up. Yep, we're done. Okay, I will send you all an email with a replay link, everything through. Thanks for joining me tonight. Nice to meet you, Sophie. Nice to see you again, Lottie. Cassandra, I'll see you tomorrow morning because you're going to miss me for not seeing me for so long. <laughs> uh, and in Google Drive, yes, your logo sting is sitting in Google Drive for you, ready to go with all those videos that you're making for that sale. Beautiful. Have a great night, everyone. Go and enjoy. See your families. For those of you who stayed up, thank you for staying up and I'll see you soon.